Hi, I'm Loyal Leo. Nice to meet you. Uh, and today I am taking on the world famous case of Depp vs. Hood. That is right, Johnny Depp vs. Amber Hood. And today I will be focusing on Amber Hood's testimony. I walk pro bono -er. Pro hmm. But anyway, if you like this video and stick around by the end of it, do subscribe and share it with a friend. That way you will help my pro boner to grow. Crap. Boner. <laughs> like I said, we're doing the trial of Johnny Depp vs. Amber Heard. This is a trial regarding the defamation lawsuit that Johnny Depp is filing against his ex-spouse Amber Heard for an op-ed that she wrote in the Washington Post, chronicling how he DA'd and essayed her. And he is suing for $50 million. She is counter-suing for $100 million because, and I quote, she can. And this is a wild case. I've never seen a defamation case before. And now, again, as I said, I wanted to focus on Amber Heard's testimony. And with that being said, I would just like to issue an apology before we start. To anybody that has been a victim of SA and DA and is actually going through this, watching the case, thinking this is marginalizing me. Because if Amber Heard is lying, it is just a really, really sore thing to imagine that someone would use this to gain leverage over a situation because there's so many people who are put in this position of SA and DA and they are just not given a voice, they're not being heard and a case like this where millions of people are watching will lead people to believe it's even harder for someone to, to get heard which is ironic because Amber Heard is the one who shouldn't be heard Look, man, I'm working pro bono. Just leave me alone. The point is that uh, a lot of people feel like they won't get heard even if they speak out. And if they tell the truth, some people think it's a lie. And this is just not going to make it any easier. So to anybody who's actually been through any of that, genuinely, sorry that you have to watch this. And I, I hesitate to say it, but this girl is setting us back in such a bad manner. And to any guy watching this... I'm just as scared as you are. The fact that a girl can lie on the stand like this, it, it, it freaks me out as well. And I don't know what to do, but I just would hate to have someone lie about me to the point that my career and life is ruined. It is just a very scary world out there to be a guy sometimes. Um, so yeah, in short, this woman has set both men and women back to the Neanderthal era. And uh, yeah, we're now looking at her case. Uh, if, if you want me to be completely honest, personally, I think that she deserves jail time rather than just getting sued because if someone can actually lie about all of the stuff she said in court under oath and talk about how she has been essayed and DA'd and everything bad and make it up, if the person wasn't Johnny Depp, if the person wasn't off his fame level and had people working for him who could testify against her, then we might be looking at a man being locked up for something he didn't do. If it wasn't Johnny Depp, it's something I think about all the time. If it wasn't Johnny Depp, Amber Heard might have gotten away with it. And I don't know if you can see which side I'm swinging towards. I'm, a, I'm an equal opportunity lawyer, but, uh, but it's fair to say I don't think Amber Heard is telling the truth. But yeah, like I said, we're going to take a look at the case. And uh, before we do, if you'd like to follow me, then uh, do so at 16leo underscore on my Instagram. That way you could tell me about the case and what you think. I'd really like to hear some people's opinions. The other thing is YouTube does this thing called super tips. You can give me money to tell me that I'm doing a good job. Do I deserve a tip? No. All right. <clears throat> but before we start, today's video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Any gamers out there? Did you know that ExpressVPN is a great tool for gamers? I've experienced getting booted off online while in the middle of a game. I play Apex a lot. Sometimes I heal people, very rarely. But when I get kicked off, people always blame me as if they weren't going to die already. Well, rival players can actually find your IP address and set off a DDoS attack on you, which slows down your internet speed, thus booting you out of your game. Some competitive players actually do this on purpose to gain an advantage. Sneak Sneaky, sneaky. So by changing my IP address while I'm gaming online, I prevent people from finding out my real IP address, thus keeping me anonymous and safe from those attackers. ExpressVPN is also a fantastic tool to help unlock block content that is not available in your country by changing your IP address. I've been getting into anime more recently. So by using ExpressVPN, I was able to watch Attack on Titan on the UK's Netflix since it isn't available where I live. There are nearly 100 different countries to connect to. 
To find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free, visit expressvpn.com slash 16leo or click the link in the description below. You'll be directly supporting my channel. Thanks, ExpressVPN. Uh, I'm going to try and discuss everything I know litigation-wise. I know so little, but I think that I have uh, somewhat of a decent knowledge base, and I think you'll find this interesting. So, uh, before we even get into that, the first thing that happened on the testimony is that Amber Heard's team actually requested that the, the lawsuit be dropped. They filed a motion to drop the case. And this went over a lot of people's heads because they're like, Oh man, they just want to drop the case and, you know, get away with it. It actually is very telling because Amber Heard is countersuing for $100 million. So if the lawyers tried to drop the case, they're essentially saying they don't want that $100 million. Why would they be saying that? Simple, because they feel like they're going to lose the case and have to pay the 50 that Johnny is suing for. That's the only reason you do that. So... Starting off this testimony, we have two lawyers who are scared that their client is going to lose this case. If that doesn't say everything you need to know, I don't know what will. And that's the start. So the first thing Johnny Depp's lawyer does is give the breakdown of what a defamatory statement can be. And uh, if we go back to the op-ed, Amber Heard didn't actually specify it was Johnny Depp. However, when having a case of defamation, under general guidelines, it is uh, okay even if the name is not mentioned, if it is inferred and we can deduce from the article that it is about a certain person with the general certainty, then a lawsuit still may be able to proceed. So he was just saying under those grounds that op-ed is more than okay to be the lawsuit's like main focus. Oh, I wasn't referring to, to... He then goes crazy for a little while. I don't know, maybe he's been smoking a little with the Mr. Depp over there. <laughs> he starts acting out like this is a movie. Johnny Depp. She didn't have to. And the testimony of Terrence Doherty... She didn't have to, Your Honor. She's a... Objection. Relevance. Uh, objection? Uh, she's a female dog. <laughs> this was just a scam for her to get the $7 million in the divorce she swore she gave to the ACLU and the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles, and she pocketed. Uh, okay, so my boy over here is getting a little crazy. He's going a little off the henny. I don't think Amber Heard married Johnny Depp because it was a scam. I think he's just uh, a little bit overdoing it, but that's sort of true. Like, in their divorce settlement, Amber Heard got $7 million, and on her Instagram and a couple other pages, I believe she said that she would donate all of the proceeds to SA slash DA victims, and unfortunately, as of today, that money has not been donated. She apparently paid, in, or said she would pay in installments, and has paid 180000 She said over 10 years she was going to pay the 7 mil, but didn't even get close. So... You gotta wonder where that money is if she said she donated it. Of course, it's still her money and it's not the end of the world. But, you know, saying you're going to donate the whole thing and then not doing it, it's, it's not looking good for credibility. And this is what this whole case is about. We have Ms. Hurd's own admissions admitting uh, to hitting Mr. Depp. Ms. Hurd threw and hit Mr. Depp with a can of Red Bull. Uh, there is also audio of that. Miss Hood actually says that she struck Johnny. She said that uh, I hit you, I didn't punch you. I didn't punch you, by the way. You, I'm sorry that I didn't hit you across the face in a proper slap, but I was hitting you. It was not punching you. Babe, you're not punched. Don't tell me what it feels like to be punched. You got hit. I'm sorry I hit you like this, but I did not punch you. She seems to think there's a difference. It's about as different as tomato, tomato. You know what I mean? The fact that we have audio of her admitting that and we have no evidence of Johnny doing anything whatsoever is pretty telling. And it's also kind of sad, the fact that we have evidence of a girl doing this, but because, and let's not misconstrue this, because she's a woman, we believe her. This is what the whole case is about. This is why I wanted to take the case or have a look at it is because it's such an important case when we discuss women lying about men and the repercussions therein. I'll get more into that just now. 
Sucker punched him with a closed fist. Sucker punched him with a closed fist. Wow. Amber Heard seems to think her colloquial language will get her removed from, like, blame. I didn't hit Johnny. I just high-fived him with an open palm to the face. What is the five fingers? Say to the face! <laughs> Slap! With that, Your Honor, we respectfully request that the court deny the motion to strike. I can only assume that Mr. Chu wrote that speech for an audience outside the court because it didn't really address my arguments. Ah, then we have my favorite lawyer whose real name is Rottenburn. I can tell you she's not the abuser, and if the case moves forward, she and her witnesses will put on even more evidence of the physical abuse she suffered at the hands of Mr. Depp. Objection! Then why doesn't she? You little boy. Objection! Relevance! I just don't understand that. I, I don't think I've ever heard a lawyer say something more um, telling. And <laughs> It's so silly to look at the judge and be like, we want the case to be dropped, but if it's not dropped, we're going to prove so hard that she's innocent. Then do it. If you want the hundred million dollars, don't drop the lawsuit. You should be praying that nobody drops this lawsuit. But the fact that you're trying to get it dismissed only to then say, well, if it's not dropped, we'll keep proving it makes me think that you're lying. Also, your name suits your face. Also, I, I don't know if you could tell, I don't like this lawyer. I don't like him. That's not, he claims he didn't strike her, but again, that's not the basis for our motion. The basis for our motion is the... He then goes on to say a bunch of nothing. But again, that's not the basis for our motion. The basis for our motion is clear and undisputed evidence of non-physical abuse. By his definitions, by his standards, by the standards of his expert, there's no dispute that Mr. Depp on abuse Amber. And therefore, if he did it even one time, there's no dispute that even under their theory of the case, the implication that they want the jury to drop the argument, which again, I'm not arguing for the purposes of today, because under the legal standard, I'm not arguing that. I'm not going to waste more time with that. And Mr. Doherty... Ah, uh, yes. Mr. I'm not going to waste the court's time with that. God made a mistake by giving you a mouth, bro. I can't take this man seriously. The only thing that I've seen him do in the Johnny Depp trial, which I will do a video on, by the way, is say uh, hearsay, object to everything, and then say you are wasting the court's time. Every time you speak, you are wasting someone's time, and nobody objects to that. Objection! Sorry, Mr. Rottenburn, but not only do you suit your last name, your first name should be A. The Washington Post wrote the headline. Exhibit 1 has her name on it. But the only evidence in this case about who wrote that headline is Mr. Doherty's testimony. It is undisputed. So that's their claim to dropping the case. Um, just because her name is on it, it doesn't mean she wrote it. Is that what you're going to say? Is that really what you're going with? Then why doesn't Amber sue the Washington Post for defamation? Because clearly she didn't write the article. Her name's just on it. Right? Wouldn't she sue them? Because this whole lawsuit is based on what she wrote, and if she didn't write it, <laughs> then somebody owes Johnny Depp an apology. So that's your actual defense. Needless to say, the judge denied that motion. For this motion, I've taken the arguments of counsel, and last night I reviewed all of the evidence. The motion to strike is denied as to statement two and three. The motion to strike is denied as to statement two and three. As usual, you failed, not only in bed, but in life, Mr. Rottenborn. Jesus. Anyway, that means Amber Heard has to now take the stand, and her lawyers will ask her softball questions and try to give the jury a reputation of her and build her character so as to say she is uh, definitely a credible source of information and also a likable one. Now I want to take you through like the proceedings of a court and show you the tactics that a team goes behind and at lengths to try and do to convince a jury. Beyond just questioning, there are a lot of things that people do and play on to get the jury to think a certain way. When you see Amber Heard come into court, she is not wearing makeup. Her hair is a bit messy. She looks a bit battered up, if you will. She, she looks worse for wear. And that is not unintentional. What I mean by that is because she's trying to make herself look like the one who is actually the victim, she needs to play on that. And uh, if she dressed up in like Gucci suits and Armani and like came out looking too pristine. People would not have that same perception of her as if maybe she is still years later looking torn up about this whole event. It's a tactic that's kind of standard nowadays and it's, it's pretty hard to miss, but a lot of people probably don't know that. You see, at the end of the day, both teams are not trying to convince the judge of anything. What they're trying to do is convince the jury that their client is right. 
Will you please state your name? Yes, it's Amber Horrible Heard. And how old are you, Amber? I am 36. I just celebrated. Okay. Ah, okay. So here's another thing. Uh, Amber Heard is going to try and act affable. She's going to try and act lovable and like someone who is credible and someone you can relate to. She looks at the jury for um, acceptance every time she says an answer. And she is going to give the best performance of her career, which is saying close to nothing because she is a shit actor. So just her being on trial long enough is, is quite good. This is the longest I will see her in any movie ever. And it's not even a movie, it's real life. Okay, and do you have a daughter? I do. Uh, she also celebrated her birthday recently. She's one. Okay. Okay, now this is a really important part in the testimony. I think a lot of people might miss it. What I mean by that is she asks, do you have a child? And she says yes, which means now people in the jury, especially females, are going to relate to her on a different level. Whether they like it or not, this is now a mother. She's now a paternal figure to someone. So whatever bearing you had on the case, you now have to factor in there is a one-year-old child in the mix. Does that not persuade your view a little bit? Is that not one of the most slimy tactics once you think about it? Once you think, oh, the jury now, whether they like it or not, are going to think, oh, yeah, that's Amber Heard with a kid, with a one-year-old kid. The tactics that they're using are crazy. And this is the smartest tactics that these two dumbass lawyers will ever use. I see right past it because I'm the man, but other people might not. But I see what you guys are doing. What is your profession? I am an actor, uh, mostly. Objection. Lying. Lying. L not? She's lying in the court under oath. She's not an actor. She's trying to be an actor. I come from Austin, Texas, a small town outside of Austin that you probably haven't heard of. Uh, I was raised by my mother and my father, and I grew up with a little sister, although I have a big sister as well. Building character, again, uh, lots of people like, oh yeah, grew up a uh, little, you know, blue collar lady. That's like me. I'm a blue collar man. I'm a blue collar lady. Oh, you know what? I like her. I like this girl. She seems nice. Juries have to be unanimous. But hey, I feel like these lawyers might even just be trying to get one or two people to be like, come on, you believe Amber. Amber alert. I did a small job in Texas and the actor in the movie that I was playing opposite had an agent visiting him from LA. She had heard about me from another bit part I did. Uh, objection, <laughs> lying. She, she, what, did she hear how bad you were in another part? Are you kidding me? I'm going to take you up to 2008. Did there come a time that you auditioned for The Rum Diary? Yes. So just a little frame of reference. Uh, the couple, Amber Heard and Johnny Depp, met in 2008 while they were both filming a movie called The Rum Diaries. So they met on that set. They were both married at the time, not to each other, but uh, an emotional connection and romantic connection started brewing. It was a very important project to him and that he wanted to meet me in person, but it was just a meeting. And what did you talk about during that? We talked about books. Okay, so um, I did my research on this case, which means I had to sit down and watch every single Amber Heard interview. One common theme prevailed. She really likes reading. In fact, uh, she mentioned it in every single interview. And it started to dawn on me when I watched this whole testimony that this is just a hypothesis. But what if she'd been reading so much, her whole life basically, that she started to understand how to fabricate things. She took the stand knowing that she was going to fabricate these lies and try and basically talk as if she was a character from a novel. We'll get into that later, but when you look at her testimony, you can clearly see that this woman is using lots of colloquial language. She's using all these uh, similes and like comparing beautiful wooden floors to getting punched. It seems like she's a character from a novel. And that is my hypothesis. She just tried to fabricate the hell out of it. Like she's a protagonist and she's the antagonist. I don't know if she knows this. We didn't really have a whole lot of interaction on set until we did a scene that involved um, kissing. We had a kissing scene and it didn't feel like a normal scene anymore. It felt real. Okay, stop. Hammer time. So when people do testimonies, their team sort of coaches them 
through responses. Otherwise, if they didn't and they just let them go wild, you could go up to the stand and conceivably be like, hey man, fuck, and then just leave. You could do that. And, and your team would be like, damn it, I didn't prepare for that. So they actually sit them down and they coach you on what questions may be asked during cross-examination and also what questions they'll ask you. They phrase certain words or they get you to say certain phrases to influence the jury in certain ways. Now, this is something that Amber did in that last sentence. She said, Johnny pulled me closer and he kissed me. She says it with such force. He grabbed my face and pulled me into him and really kissed me. Those words that uh, basically paint Johnny Depp as someone who is the aggressor, which is, which is what we're talking about in this whole case. And if you think I'm reaching, maybe just a few lines down, you'll hear some more of these magic words that are going to get the jury to try and think, oh, okay, Johnny was always that type of person. The way that they paint him even before they start talking about the real stuff. It's very smart. The jury is, at the end of the day, the group that decides the fate of these two. So, smart move. But we were filming a scene. Did he use his tongue? Yes. Objection, old, old... Uh, uh, uh. What? What the hell is wrong with that lawyer? Karen, can you put it back in your f***ing hair? Did he use his tongue? Does that have any bearing on the case at all? Why did you ask? And why did she answer like... Yes. And he kind of picked up the back of my robe with his boot. So now we'll talk about the first time Johnny did something crazy. But the way that she talks about it, the way that Amber talks about it, is almost as if it's a playful event. And I kind of turned around and I just kind of giggled and batted it away playfully. And... Uh, he, he kind of pushed me down on this like bed sofa, flirtatious, and he said, uh, yum. Okay, so let's break that one down. Hollywood actor, famous Johnny Depp, filming his own movie with a live crew set around him everywhere, decides to take you to the trailer as you've turned around, put his boot up your skirt, then push you down onto the bed flirtatiously, and then say the words, yum, while doing this to you. And he expected you to be okay with it, not tell anyone, never explain it, and feel okay with that for the rest of your life. Sounds like you talked to James Franco and not Johnny Depp. That would not fly on any set, I don't think. And if it does, it shouldn't. If that w really happened, which I, I mean, I'm not saying that it didn't, but I'm completely saying that it, it shouldn't, you can't just laugh that off. That's a red flag and a half. But you know what? Amber's actually going to get more and more graphic and more in detail. This is just the tip of the proverbial iceberg. That the world didn't know about the split between he and his former partner. So we were secretly dating and then... Um, just quick context. Uh, Amber Heard's ex, uh, Tassa Van Rie, I think that's how you say her name. There was also claims that Amber had SA and DA'd her. I just want to go on record and say that the claims were disputed by Tessa Van Rie herself, who said that it was falsified and grossly misinterpreted. So I don't want to use that against Amber Heard, but it's noteworthy to say that out of the two of them, the only one who had had any like SA slash DA things said about them is Amber and not Johnny, because all of his previous partners have uh, claimed that he is n never like what Amber Heard testified that he is and haven't experienced that, which is quite telling when your exes are like, yeah, he's a pretty good guy. I felt like this man knew me and saw me in a way that no one else had. Oh, by the way, whenever Johnny Depp thinks something is bullshit, he drinks from his cup. I find it hilarious. I just wanted to emphasize that. I felt he understood. I felt like... When I was around Johnny, I felt like the most beautiful person in the whole world. Doesn't that sound like a shitty novel? When I was around Johnny, I felt like the most beautiful person in the whole world. He made me see a different kind of love. You know, it made me feel seen, made me feel like a million dollars. Oh, there's that, act. there it is. There's that zero quality acting, that uh, golden raspberry nominated acting, which she was nominated for the worst actress award. Mm hmm. Million dollars. Well, guess what? You got seven in the divorce, so you won. 
Objection! Sorry, is it objection? I can't call her a bit. I'm sorry. I'm trying to be professional. Guess what, snitch? Bruh. You won seven million. The fact that she's going on the stand and acting is really bad. And you're going to see her act more and more throughout this. She's going to try and play to the audience, which is, as the way I see it, not how you should do a testimony. Especially when the victim is a victim of DA or SA, it's kind of important to note that in most cases that I've seen, and I've had it happen to me too, whenever I tell people, or not that I do often, but whenever it happens or comes up, I don't want to live in the moment. I don't remember what the person was wearing. I don't remember if it was a beautiful day or not. I remember what happened. Whenever someone tries to embellish it, they're trying to play for the audience. I think she's lying. He loved knives. He loves a lot of things. When Johnny loves things, he does it a lot. Um, just want to stop you there. Again, this is something that I think her team made her say with that specific wording. Because if you look at the grammatical sentence, uh, Johnny loves to do it a lot. Just that sentence makes no grammatical sense in the context of knives. What you can do is drugs. And she's going to later allude to the fact that Johnny did a lot of that and then try to equate his heavy narcotic use to his violent outbursts. It's Amber Heard trying to plant a seed into the mind of the jury or the jurors who will then be like, oh yeah, Johnny did love to do things. That's what they're going for with this. So the knives have close to nothing to do with the case, but it was just a way for Amber Heard to wiggle that sentence in there early enough so that they might get it into their head like, oh yeah, he does do these things. So kind, so generous to my family. He was giving my dad gifts, he gave him guns. He was just like invited to come, you know. Objection, weird. I think my dad would have married him himself, not <laughs> if I had uh, him. Objection? <laughs> my dad would have married him if I didn't is something that I don't think that I've ever heard anyone say ever. Yo, that's wild. Uh, even Johnny Depp had to laugh at that one. You know, he would make these comments about whoring myself out, but do so in the context of me acting, you know, expletive, expletive, you know, just this. The point is it felt really dirty. Um, I want to bring up just a tidbit here. I don't know if it's necessarily relevant. Uh, Amber Heard definitely got typecast as a person for her looks because her acting ability is akin to that of a dead potato in the fields of Ireland during the famine. Uh, yeah, uh, Johnny Depp also, mind you, very handsome guy. In fact, world's most sexiest man, 2009. Johnny Depp actually made a career out of uh, hating that moniker and that title. He did not want the title of sexy person bestowed to him because he felt like that ruined the craft. And he actually went out of his way in all of his movie roles to get so deep into character to look as different as he possibly could. Uh, all you have to do is watch any Tim Burton movie like Edward Scissorhands or maybe the new Alice in Wonderland. Or you could watch his most popular movie, I'm a Pirate. And it's Disney, so I can't say arse. The point is, the man goes out of his way to avoid being typecast as the good-looking one. And I don't know if there's any validity to what Amber Heard says, but if he does, I think that's what he was trying to say. I felt, I felt beautiful in it. Like, stupid as that sounds, I, I felt pretty in this dress I picked out and... <sighs> Her facial emotions are akin to that of L.A. Noir. If you had Press X to Doubt as a meme in 2022, this is the person that we need to use as the meme from now on. It's gotta be Amber Heard. Like, stupid as that sounds, I, I felt pretty in this. You're lying, Morgan. You just, you can't even tell whether she's telling the truth because she has like 20, 30,000 facial expressions for any given emotion. This is what happens when you don't know what to act and someone's like, play sad. And she's like, <laughs> you belong in the food court. Objection. Relevance. I'm sorry. Okay. Objection. I'm, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Strike that one, your honor. And he said, when I brought up the dress and the event, because it was an event to support a charity I was really involved with. Oh, this is a charity. Remember the last time you supported a charity and took the money? <laughs> hey, don't do that. 
Of course she has to make herself look like the good person. It was a charity event. I know it was a red carpet event, but it was a charity event. That's why they got the red carpet. The carpet cost more than the starving kids I was going to. My dress cost more than a village. Do you remember the first time that he physically hit you? Yes. It's seemingly so stupid, so in, like insignificant. I will never forget it. It changed my life. It was seemingly so insignificant. I'll never forget it. It changed my life. The oxymoronic thing from an oxymoron over here is just, it's killers. Okay, so I also wanted to bring up this point. I think this is really important. When you are trying to get a person to feel a certain way and you're lying or you need, feel the need to convince them, you will preface something by saying what you should feel by saying something like what you felt. So if I was to tell you a story I want you to be sad over, I'll be like, this is sad, this made me cry, and then tell you the story. So you'll already go into it thinking, oh, okay, I'm going to hear some, some sad stuff. What she just said was, this changed my life forever, before she told the story. She's trying to play to the audience and get them to feel like, oh, this is so bad that her life was literally never the same. She feels the need to convince people. And when you do that in court, I feel like you're lying. Because if it really happened, you wouldn't feel the need to preface it. If it's bad, people will know it's bad. Um, I didn't realize at the time, but I think he was using cocaine because it was like there was a jar, a jar of cocaine. I, re I realized that sounds weird. Oh, well, you didn't know what it was, but you knew it was cocaine. You also knew there was a jar of it. Okay. Cocaina. No. Flower. And I asked him about the tattoo he has on his arm. And I said, what, is it, what does it say? And he um, said, it says, why no? I didn't see that. I thought he was joking. Uh, just for context, Johnny Depp used to have a tattoo saying Winona Ryder, which was his former partner. And after they split, he redacted it to say why no, as in, I like wine. That's what the, they're talking about. Because it didn't look like it said that at all. And I laughed. And... Slapped me across the face. And I laughed. Let me show you. I, I brought out Lola over here to recreate some of the scenes. I'm going to try and do it tastefully, but at the same time, it is really ridiculous. Apparently, Mr. Depp slaps her across the face, and she does. <laughs> uh, that would scare me away, personally, if, if, I, if I did. And then someone was like. <laughs> I'm all of a sudden realizing that the worst thing has just happened to me. Here we go again. There, there it is. Uh, did you pick up on that, guys? It's the worst thing that could ever happen to me. So before she says what it is, she prefaces it. Like a clickbait YouTube title, if you will. This just happened. Couldn't believe this just happened. Now the jury's interested. The worst thing just happened. So people come in with expectation, which is what you don't want if you're telling the story credibly. You don't want to have any of this colorful language. You want to be a a credible source of information that is factual. You want them to believe you and you want your truth to be told. When you have someone lying, they will try and convince you. This is just the subtext and I think it's so telling that we, that we saw that. Amazing, amazing stuff. It didn't physically hurt me. I was just sitting there on this, on, on this carpet, looking at the dirty carpet, wondering... Oh, hold on, hold on. Dirty carpet? Wait, hold on. I, I don't believe we've uh, established that. As far as I've seen, uh, Johnny, apparently, you, ha, 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 why are you on the carpet all of a sudden? Was the hit that lethal? Can we, can we get some context? Um, I also want to talk about lying now. I think when you want to look at how to do things and how not to do things, a good way to look is <laughs> at how kids do things. Because kids are uninhabited. They don't understand the inner workings of society and big things. So they are not self-aware and they just do things because that's what a kid does. Now, I remember for a fact that when I used to lie, which I did a lot when I was a kid, I would try and over-explain a situation to my mom to act like a like a great like I had a great alibi. My mom would be like, um, 
who did this in the kitchen? Who made this mess? And I'd be like, Mom, it, it, it couldn't have been me because at 3.23, 42 seconds, I was with my friend Brandon and we were watching Dragon Ball Z. It was the episode that Piccolo went into the time chamber and then he came out and I remember so well because I was like, Brandon, we should make a time chamber. And he was like, yes, Leo. Yes, we should. And then we actually made one and someone stole it, which, which is crazy. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Uh, which is why I couldn't have made the mess in the kitchen because I was too busy building that time chamber from 203 to 206. So, wasn't there. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. Well, I would love to help you, but I can't. It's too much. The over-explanation. If this really happened, I really fail to see how someone would think, oh, it's a dirty carpet, or oh, these details that are so insignificant would matter. So the over-explanation is sort of trying to create an alibi and it's sort of trying to make the jury aware that, oh, I must really know about this. I, I, because I remember it in such detail. I could tell you everything. I could tell you how dirty the cop it was. I must have been there. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to react. Because, God, did he just hit me? No. Dom, I, I know you can't hit a woman. I wish I could sit here and say... Well, actually, you can't hit anyone. <laughs> It's kind of why we're in this trial in the first place. I stood up and I walked out of that house and I drew a line and I stood up for myself. <laughs> oh, nice, Amber. Could you please breathe into the mic a little louder? We'd like to. We'd like you to break it so we could get another one. <laughs> oh, there it is, Amber. You broke it. Good job. You you did it, Amber. You did it again. Before I know it, he starts crying. Like I, I had never seen an adult man cry. I didn't even really see my dad cry at my grandma's funeral. You know, it's just, it's weird. Ooh, this is a tough one. If you, you guys might have to play this one back really slowly. It's, it's weird. If you look at the, it's weird, you can actually see the truth come out when Amber talks about it. Whenever she's saying something, uh, disingenuous she pretends and she plays and she makes a hundred facial expressions. Whenever she says something off, uh, value, she's confident. And uh, the thing that she happens to be saying is that grown men crying is weird, which it isn't. Men are allowed to be vulnerable and to actually say it's weird for a man to cry or express his emotions. It sort of gives us insight into her background. And he's crying. He's crying. The judgment that she's speaking with. It's, it's that abrasive tone. It's that tone that's reminiscent of her in the audio. She's speaking exactly like how she spoke in those audio tapes. She's saying it with conviction. She's saying it with truth. It's the condescension in her voice that comes through when she is telling the truth. Wow. He said, I'd rather cut my hand off than ever lay it on you or lay it upon you. You know, and, he and you said, I'll just take a finger, thanks. You know, he understood I could never forgive him and it was done. So I felt kind of safe and saying, okay, let's have a talk, or, you know, yeah, we'll talk. By the hair, or he'd grab me by the arm, face, pull me into him, scream at me that way, he'd smash things around me, then he would smash things very close to me. She's, is, she's describing the Hulk, isn't she? He'd smash things, he'd go crazy, he'd go brazy. Blah, 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 blah. It started with slapping, um, and it got to be like repetitive slaps, where he'd hold me um, in a position and slap me multiple times. Here's a recreation of that. Noticing the pattern of the violence going with the drinking and drugs than I as to what he was on, so I just knew how to react, you know? Johnny on speed is very different from Johnny on opiates. So the angle that they're going for and the angle that her team have chosen to use as the basis, the crux of the situation, is that Johnny Depp... Uh, uses a lot of narcotics and by his own self-admission he does what they're trying to do is show that this man has also used a uh, violent outburst because of the narcotics which there is no actual proof that there's any uh correlation between the two but they're going to basically try to stretch this wider than uh mr rottenberg's asshole to try and fabricate the story i don't see any validation to it and if i did if I saw evidence, I would be very much more inclined to believe her. But the things that Amber says, 
you'd expect some really top-notch evidence, and she presents none of it. Remember, I'm going to take you up to March of 2013. So let me start with the painting incident. One day, he, he kind of stayed up. Uh, thanks for giving no context, Karen. As usual, you're doing your job like a pure 2 out of 10. Context for that is that her former partner was the painter. She painted a picture for Miss Hurd. And Miss Hurd framed it in her house in Orange County. And uh, Johnny apparently uh, abused the narcotics and got annoyed at her thinking that she cheated. Yes, the painting was always up, but for, one, for some reason, he, just that day, he thought, Wow, that painting's been there, and I feel like you're cheating on me. So that is the context. Drinking, doing cocaine, music, in and of itself, that weird. He wasn't making sense taken it seemed like a turn and had decided that the painting was an offense that he could not forgive me for okay he wasn't making sense is not a point in your favor because the story is not making sense you need to make it make a little sense it can't have zero sense it can't have zero semblance of a plot just like a movie this can't be like your movies with no plot and no sense this has to be like his movies with a goddamn good plot and great characters it meant I was having an affair with my ex-partner. He eventually takes it down and tries to burn it, but it was unsuccessful, luckily, because he was not, he, he didn't, he wasn't <laughs> with a, uh, one of those normal, what do you call them? I think she's talking about a lighter. Uh, okay, get to the point. Big lighters. He wasn't very successful at doing it while drinking. Let's, let's. Oh, oh really? Huh. He wasn't successful. How much was he drinking? How much was he... How much narcotics was he on? Because what you said is this man failed to burn a painting with a Bic lighter. Uh, let, let me try and recreate the scene then. Uh, bottoms up. You're telling me that a grown man couldn't do Oh. This. I find that really hard to believe. Pull up uh, Defendant's Exhibit 161. Just thought you should know there exists a book title. So now the first piece of evidence is presented. Johnny Depp says, Just thought you should know that there exists a book titled Disco Bloodbath. That's all. Ambo replies, We need that book. She then replies, Is it about Friday night by any chance? And he says, how can you make me smile about such a hideous moment? We're in the kitchen living room area and he backhands me. You know, he wears a lot of rings. Uh, it got a little blood on the wall. Your Honor, I'm going to move the admission of Defendant's Exhibit 178. Okay, so we move on to the next uh, event of DA. I'm just going off of exactly what she said. The evidence presented is Ambo with what looks to be a little scar or sorry, bruise on her arm. How did you sustain that bruise? Johnny slapped me, I walked away from him and that made it worse. And he kind of did this thing with his body where I could tell he was gonna hit me again. Okay, so that was the evidence she presented. I listened to what she just said and I want to again, try and tastefully recreate that. Um, we're talking about someone who she said had rings on his hand, backhanded her. It hurt so much, or it made such an impact that her lip went into her mouth and blood splattered on the wall. The force that had to have occurred for that to happen is, is quite substantial for you to... And then that to go on the wall. Why would you not take a picture of that so as to use it as evidence? Why, if you were going to take a picture, would you take a picture of something that could be misconstrued as just any normal incident? As opposed to a uh, uh, smack to the face, which you couldn't possibly do yourself. Uh, I, re I remember being on the floor of my apartment. How could this happen to me again? Boo, the, his, his dog, he grabs Boo out of the window and he's howling while holding the dog out of the window. Let me recreate that scene, mind you. The dog is actually not even as big as uh, this doll. The dog is probably the size of its head. So just bear with me. He's in a car, the car's moving. He's holding the dog outside of the window, doing a woo! Everyone in the car, I'll never forget it. Everyone just froze. 
No one did anything. <laughs> uh, mind you, we're talking about the same man who actually smuggled his dogs into Australia and faced a ban and also charges because he wanted his dogs with him. Uh, which is, this is the same dog, by the way. So you're, you're telling me that he went from that to Michael Jackson. I'm going to hold my son Prince out the window and be like, Billy Jean is not my lover. We walk into this house where everyone was waiting for him. And everyone smiles and says... Objection! Hearsay! You can't say things uh, that other people say. Amber Hood, I don't know why, but continues to be like, other people were like, what's up in his house, boss? You can't prove that. That didn't happen. That's not part of this case. Keep it together. Amber, you said that you took this that morning. Oh, shit, now we get some evidence which proves that Amber Hood can faithfully take a photo without it up great job amber what did you what is this evidence off i'll tell you what the evidence is off she says it johnny depp apparently recorded a single which i wouldn't like to hear uh she's also got a baraka she says that there's a shot glass there of liquid if that's a shot glass i don't want to know what a mug is and also his and i quote drug box the next story that amber talks about is when they are at a uh, rv place or camping with a bunch of people and uh, the story is as wild as Amber's imagination wants it to be. Um, Johnny gets really activated. He gets really upset. He says, hey, man, you think you're touching my girl? But she kind of threw up her hands and Johnny grabbed her, her wrist and kind of twisted it, pulled her into him and said, do you know how many pounds of pressure it takes to break a human wrist? Huh? Oh, OK. Let's recreate that one. Bear with me again. So she's touching Amber Hood. He looks at her wrist. He pulls her in closer. Do you know how easy it is to break your wrist? That's that's what he said. He's been he's been talking to. That sounds like something Nicolas Cage will say on any given Tuesday. Uh, she's crying, and he just turned all that. Um, it seemed like he turned all that rage onto the trailer itself, and he just started smashing things. He picked up something on the table and threw it right into the glass cabinet. So he's now turned into the Hulk again and is actually beating up a trailer. And he says, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Be honest with me. Rip my dress. You know, that's my... I just finished that dress. If something that traumatic happened to you, would you remember details like he ripped the top part of my dress and also remembered that you had just gotten it done and it was a pink dress? Uh, okay, here's a story. Here's a story. I almost got run over last week. And, and isn't it like, I know it sounds like a joke. I all, my friend had to push me out the way. I couldn't tell you what he was wearing. I couldn't tell you what I was wearing. I couldn't tell you brand the car was, what make it was. I know the person was a biggish person. And I know his face because I hate that person. That's all I remember. Because I don't remember details like what tread of tire this man had before he almost ran me over. That wasn't the important part of the situation. So I would wager that if something really happened, you wouldn't know details like that, but you would know how it felt to be in that position. And um, he's like grabbing my, my, my breasts, he's touching my thighs, um, he rips my underwear off. He. <laughs> Objection. He rips my underwear off. Oh, God. All right. Well, for the sake of... <laughs> okay, for the sake of argument, and I just want to go on record and say that, of course, not all underwear is the same. I know girls' underwear is different, but let's just hypothetically assume, and yes, this is my underwear, um, that underwear is elastic. <sighs> It's not as easy as you would think to rip it off. Unlike cotton, stuff doesn't rip just like that. So he would have to use some monumental Hulk-like force to rip it out of your damn ass cheeks. I'm just saying. Proceeds to do a cavity, sir? Do he's looking, he said he was looking for his drugs, his cocaine. Just shoved his fingers inside me. <laughs> just... Uh, stupid! I stood there. You're lying, Morgan. I'm sorry. He's uh, he shoved his. I know this is sensitive, but he shoved his his fingers inside you. 
Uh, also, are you a drug mule? Why the f why would it be in your butt? Oh, because he's not making sense because he's so high that he does things like this. Why didn't he do this to any other partners? Why are you the only person that's getting the short end of the stick? Why did he have a seemingly good re enough relationship for all of them to leave five-star reviews and you're the only one who leaves a one-star Uber ride and says that the Uber didn't even turn up? Unlike uh, Bill Cosby, where, I don't know, something like 80 women came forward, you have to start believing some of them if that many women are coming forward. It's actually her against everyone else in this case. And it makes it all that much harder to believe because everyone else is kind of saying the opposite. That just got fixed. We walked out of the trailer at some point. My dog stepped on a bee. Objection. What the... I just don't get the things that she says. My dog stepped on a bee? What are you? Congratulations, your dog killed a bee. What? You like jazz? I was so in love. He'd lose control and everyone would clean up after him. I cleaned up after him. I mean, this man lost control of his bowels and I cleaned up after him. Oh, I thought that in Johnny's testimony, your lawyers actually claimed you were fecal phobic when questioned about the turd on the bed. And if you don't know what the turd on the bed is, you're gonna have to watch the other video. It's amazing. Um, I thought you were fecal phobic, according to your lawyers. So what are you doing cleaning his bowels up? <laughs> Explain that one. He slams me up against the the sidewall of the bedroom of the kid. We were in the bedroom this whole time. Ah, uh, so now we get on to another DA situation and Johnny is going crazy. But up against the wall of the cabin and slams me up by my neck and holds me there for a second and tells me that he, he could kill me and he's saying i'm embarrassing to him my feelings hurt yeah apparently your feelings are the only thing getting hurt the amount of pain that this woman describes he banged me against the wall he smacked me here blood was splattering all over it's like a goddamn martin scorsese movie and she is just walking it off like a champ the only thing that was hurt, apparently, is her feelings and also her dog who stepped on a bee. <laughs> Those are two important parts of the case. Her feelings got hurt and her dog's leg is hurt. Ms. Heard and what is depicted in this picture. Now she starts showing evidence of the case, which is just fantastic. You cracked the case, Amber. You got him. You got him. We caught him in the act. Johnny Depp looking like Bob Marley on a Wednesday. You got him. Please tell the jury. Uh, Johnny passed out on the island. Um, I feel like you can say anything if you just get a picture like that. Like, how about this? Well, uh, Amber, what is that? Well, that's him after a 12-year bender. You know, he developed dreadlocks. He hasn't cut his hair. Uh, and, and Amber, how, how about this next picture right here? How, can you tell us about this one? Yeah, yeah, this is him in his cult cultural appropriation phase. He just said he's a, uh, he called me a Navajo. The conversation about moving in became, um, you know, hard to resist because I was increasingly becoming a part of his life. Okay, so I think it's important to talk about uh, DA and SA and the situation that a lot of people are in. I think... In a lot of situations, uh, people who haven't been in that that particular situation think that it's a lot easier than it is for people to leave in certain circumstances. That's why they're like, oh, if he did this or she did this, why didn't you just leave? It's actually not that easy. They sometimes possess a power over you. That is just about always when you are living together or in a situation where you feel uncomfortable in your own home. Amber has her own home. Johnny asked her to move in. She didn't have to say yes. She could have said no. Now, I think that spits in the face of everyone else if she's making consciously stupid decisions and still having the consequences happen. You're just doing it to yourself at this point. And this is why I think the story's fake. I, I don't think anybody in their right mind, given the chance and opportunity, would be like, yeah, I'd love to move in and be even more scared of you on a daily basis. If anything, did you do differently in terms of pursuing your acting career? Well, I've always, I've always been really bad at acting. Objection. Relevance. Sorry, it was objection. Bad at acting. Did there come a time that you were became engaged to Mr. Depp? And it was really sweet. He got down on one knee and said, "I want you to be my girl." Oh. So you moved in and then he said, let's get engaged. And you thought, yes, yes, you haven't backhanded me lately. Let's do that. 
Okay. Sure. Let's continue. Be my girl forever. My woman, my girl. I, it was one of the most, I can't describe that kind of joy, you know, I thought. That's joy? That's joy? That face is joy. Shortly after they left. My God, woman. This is a happiness. Oof, I never want to see you happy. And at some point, he just whacks me in the face. I think that was the first time I was like, is this a broken nose? At the time, I was unsure what that feeling was. But you'd know what it was. Trust me, you'd, you'd know what it was. You know what a broken finger is? You never broke a bone? Trust me, you'll know when you do. But I remember my nose being swollen, discolored, red. And uh, I took a picture of my face at some point and made a joke about it to my friend about how bad I looked compared to how the Objection red hearsay. Yeah, besides that being hearsay, why didn't you show the picture that you took to your friend? Why didn't you... Uh, I'm sorry, I know the evidence of the friend will be redacted, but the picture would remain. Uh, why didn't you take a picture of the, your nose being... What was it? Red, swollen, and bruised. Uh, that would be... That would be great evidence of the court in order to put Johnny the monster away. So where's that picture? I'd, I'd like to see it. What, if any, discussions or arguments did you have with Mr. Depp? Oh, of course. We're just going to move past that and believe the story without seeing any evidence. Because this is a court of hearsay. Right. This is a defamation case. Everything's based on what people are saying. He was mad at me for taking the job with James Franco. Hated. Hated James Franco. Um, uh, as opposed to most people who love him, right? How about this clip? The bad stuff can happen on a movie as well. There's some people that go into this business because they got off and having power. And there can be that type of predatory aspect on a set because you think, well, we're in the circus and we're on the road. Come try to get this job from me. You want, you want me to give you a job? Come on, come. Come prove to me that you want this job. That's a sin and that's against the law. You will agree with that, James? Yeah, the cha if it changes, it, yeah, of course. Thank you to the Boston plane incident we've heard about that earlier so now we get to the boston plane incident yeah this one this one this is a doozy he, i mean i'm sitting on the plane for a very long time waiting for him and he finally opens the door drunk um i already know he's using he sits down in front of me at one point i was looking out of the window and he slaps my face okay i'm just gonna recreate some of this uh as, as so she's looking out the window he's sitting here <laughs> And uh, that's what we got so far. He sl slaps her face. His friend is in our proximity. And I, it didn't hurt my, it didn't hurt my face. It just felt embarrassed that he do that to me in front of people. She's now saying or claiming that Johnny is so open about the way that he's doing things that even in the proximity of others around him, he feels that it's okay to do this and nobody will have anything to say and he will face no repercussions as one of the most prolific public figures in the world. That is what she's claiming. My back is turned to him and I feel this boot in my back. It just kicked me. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She, she leaves now and she's walking away and now he's like, hey. Did there come a time that you tape recorded Mr. Depp. She then taped records some absolutely damning evidence, which I'd like you to hear. Uh, 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 uh. Yep, that's, that's the evidence. We got audio recordings off. Ah, ah. <laughs> Apparently that's the evidence that she's going to use. What does this prove? Johnny Depp says some weird things. He makes some sounds. I, didn't, I, I thought to myself, run a wonderful way. And I just remember feeling so embarrassed. I walked to the front of the plane. I sat down and I just looked out of the window. Jerry Judge's security and... Her friend, who she, ha she did not mention, was on the flight. Her friend watched... And, and said nothing. You need to either get some better friends or tell some better stories. My friend, both kind of under their breath, asked me, are you okay? Objection, and hearsay. She then does something weird. I think we've seen this on TikTok a lot. She uh, goes to adjust her nose and then takes a picture. So you can see the pictures being taken. 
Amber, I'm going to show you now what is Defendant's Exhibit 272, and this is on... Oh, yes. Here's some evidence. Just to let you know that I'm fine, my angel. I miss you, of course. But this was the right thing to do to speed up the process. I love you more than life. Yours, Steve. Uh, he calls her Slum. She calls him Steve. It's from a novel. Uh, I just can't live without you. You are my everything. There are no words. I just want you to be okay and happy. I love you more every single day. Can't imagine my life without you. So yeah, it looks like two people who are wrestling each other every other day, right? This is just the evidence that you need in court to help prove that he indeed is someone who is doing malicious things to you. In the hallway, he grabbed me by the arm and slammed me up against the, the hallway wall. And I At this point in the case, I started playing it at two times the speed because I just could not take this woman's lies. I managed to get out of his grasp uh, enough to take a few steps and kind of I kind of curved around and went into the closet. And um, by the time I made it into the closet, uh, he had me by the hair and... Um, it felt like he was just wailing on me, but in a really sloppy way, like hitting the back of my head. And Okay, so at this point, she's going to talk about the most graphic story. And uh, sorry to anyone who has to, you know, uh, has any, like, trouble watching this. But, um, yeah, so now she's in the closet. He's holding her by the hair and wailing on her, the back of her, her head. I walked away carpet with him and checking my phone obsessively for pictures because my back was, my dress was backless. Checking for bruises and making sure that nothing, like, there would be no marks on me. And we just looked like this... Other thing on the carpet, but it was just uh, she then says at the premiere of his movie Mordecai in 2015, I believe, they went to the red carpet and she was like scared because she was wearing a backless dress and she didn't know if the marks would still be there. Now I brought up some pictures just to see and it looks like there is nothing there. There's nothing at all. I'm not a uh, expert in makeup, but I, I just don't see anything. In fact, it actually looks like Johnny Depp is the sadder one when looking at the pictures. That is the uh, driveway leading up to the house that Johnny was renting while shooting Pirates 5. He, when he shoved me, I went flying across these parakeet floors. I mean, just skidding shh, across these floors. He, uh, he now, in another case of DA, pushes a... And it's not a push down. This is a... And I remember thinking it just looked so easy for him to throw me around like that, you know. I, I, he shoves me up against the fridge. Uh, he has me by the throat, holding me there. Okay, so now we're talking about you know, she must have got up and shoves against the fridge, throat against the thing. By my throat, just kind of bashing me against the, the wall next to the fridge. I'm kind of moving in that area, and at some point, I'm in his face. I mean, I hit my head hard. I say kitchen, Ed, but it, it's more of a bar. Okay, so it was a kitchen, but now it's a bar. He slams her head. Uh, just to let you know, the back of your head has... Uh, the easiest concussion protocol thing like if you hit the back of your head too hard you can suffer um whiplash and then create like that brain trauma in your head so uh repeatedly hitting that is uh very indicative of many people who develop a concussion that's why lots of people in the nfl besides having to wear a helmet also go through concussion protocol after they uh have their careers done because a lot of people in the nfl actually deal with those um post-traumatic traumas like that just saying, if it's really hard, she would have to have a very lucky and hard cranium to withstand those hits. At some point, I shove him hard to get him off me, and he shoved me back, and he said, you want to go, little girl? I'm holding his shirt lapel, um, and he kind of just flings me, for lack of a better way to describe it. Okay, so now she has his shirt lapel, and he flings her across the room. Flings is a, is a very uh, loose, but... Uh, it's very descriptive, and flings her would be <laughs> that would be that struggle by the bar area. Um, at one point, he has me up against the, the wall and he's punching the wall, the wall to like realize that there's a and pick up the phone and he's scraping. He's like, rah, he's like, rah, he's like, rah, he's like, rah, 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 and he felt like he was on top of me, and I'm, lo I, I'm looking at in his eyes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, you can see Johnny looking up to the sky and drinking. I, I would wager his body language is as if to say, oh my God. Um, she then tries to put on her best performance and cry. She tries to make tears come out. They don't come out, but she tries so hard. I felt this pressure. I felt this pressure. <laughs> he held my pubic bone. He <laughs> thought he was present. He was <laughs> it's easy to think that the loud noises and the frantic behavior is, you know, real. And I'd like to believe that. But then 
what she says is just so hard to believe. She thought that she was being punched in her pubic or pelvic bone. She thought that she was being punched. We later find out that she apparently says that she was being <sighs> penetrated. Oh, gosh. Um, those are two things that I don't think are easy to misconstrue, being punched and being uh, and, and having insertion. I, I just don't see how you can mistake the two at any given point, but let's continue. I just saw his arm. I could feel his arm moving, and I, it looked like he was punching me. I remember looking at all the broken bottles, broken glass, because I didn't know if it was broken. I didn't know if the bottle that he had inside me was broken. I don't know if, he, if the bottle he had inside me was broken. If it was broken, you'd most definitely need surgery. Also, so I had a little look at the pelvic bone. She said that it was broken. It takes four to six months to uh, to heal that. And uh, you will have difficulty walking or doing other movements. And uh, you might have even loss of nerve function in the lower body, if, if this was true. I couldn't feel it. I couldn't feel it. I didn't feel pain. She also says she didn't feel pain. And then I looked up. The first thing that came up is osteitis pubia is a painful condition. They went through the trouble of saying that it is indeed a painful condition. So for her to not feel pain and be able to walk after an incident that apparently broke her bone, she's superhuman. She is literally Wonder Woman. And you have to wonder, what the hell, woman? I took them down and someone showed me and he said, look what you made me do. I did this for you, something to that effect. And to that effect. And uh, Then she sort of glosses over the fact that she actually severed Johnny Depp's finger. And uh, that's, again, uh, more on his testimony. I will get to that. But uh, in short, apparently uh, Johnny claims that uh, she threw a vodka bottle and it cut his finger open. And while she's telling the story, you can actually see Johnny Depp audibly go, wow, to his lawyer. And like he was using his finger. I quickly became aware that that's what he was using as a paintbrush, even though there was lots of paintbrushes around. Um, and um, I... Figured out he was missing a finger, he kind of held it up and... <laughs> uh, there is one piece of evidence he draws on the mirror. None of it really makes any sense. I did look into it. He does say, call Carly, Simon. She said she did it better, babe. And I think this is a reference to a song, You're So Vain, by Carly Simon. Um, and maybe it's talking about Amber Heard's egocentricity. But I don't have enough evidence to go off here to say either person is right or wrong. It's just weird to draw on a mirror. My forearms were cut. My bottoms of my feet were sliced up pretty good. Your forearms were cut and your the bottoms of your feet were sliced up pretty good. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm listening. Over and over again, I felt that pressure against my bone. It felt like a flat surface. It felt like a flat surface. It felt like a square, but a flat surface. Now, I don't know about you, but logistically, a hand has knuckles. So... I'd feel the grading of the knuckles. I wouldn't feel like a flare. I wouldn't feel like a square and I wouldn't feel a flat square. Ah, uh, something's not adding up there. Why wouldn't you take pictures of that? If you've taken pictures of things before on your face, why wouldn't you take pictures of your sliced up forearms and your cut up feet? I, f I fail to see the consistency in your argument. My sister, she just threw herself in the line of fire or whatever. She just all of a sudden was there trying to get Johnny to stop. Um. Now, this story involves Amber Heard's sister, and they actually recounted this testimony because it, in 2016, as a deposition, both parties actually had to uh, testify in private. And I actually brought that footage up as well, just to see what the differences were. Johnny swings at her, and I just, any other, I don't hesitate, I don't wait, I just, in my head, instantly think of Kate Moss and the stairs, and I swung at him. In all of my relationship to date with Johnny, I hadn't landed a blow. And I, for the first time, hit him. Um, so this is a little legality thing. Um, I sort of like fast forwarded it, but you can actually see the lawyer's face light up when she brings up Kate Moss, which I believe is Johnny Depp's ex. And what that means is because you're bringing up other spouses, they can do the same in cross-examination. So now they're able to uh, cross-examine her marital things and spouses and how she dealt with those things. At the same time, we are now getting to the point where Johnny has initially started with privately doing DA things to Amber Heard, then actually doing it around uh, his friends openly, and now gotten to the point where it's not just her, 
it's other members of her family that he's openly doing this to. So now we take you back to 2016, where she looks like uh, 30 years younger. Put my head down. I said you hit me. I was crying. He yanks my head back, and he's, I don't know, smacking my face or moving my face, or I don't know if he's trying to grab my face or if he's hitting my face. Okay, so in this deposition, her sister is not actually present. She does go on to say that she would do anything to protect her sister, but he's at the moment doing this to her. She threw a vodka bottle at me, and my, my hand was uh, resting on the marble. The first bottle went, and the second one, it smashed this finger, who I now call Little Richard. So now uh, I looked at Johnny's testimony, or, or his deposition, sorry, and he explains the same story in 2016 that he does now about his finger. The, the only thing that I can take from this conversation from four years, or sorry, six years ago, is that the, there's evidence for one and nothing for the other. So it's kind of hard to believe Amber. We had some interaction where I, I, I said, I think I said something to him on the stairs. I just remember how quickly he shot back up the stairs and um, grabbed me by the back of my hair, my head, and slammed his, um, his hand on my head. And I went down on the stairs. In the other deposition, she did not go down the stairs. But uh, in this one, the testimony, she did go down the stairs, huh? So he went up the stairs, slammed her head, and she fell down the stairs, which is a pretty big thing. Would leave a mark, you know? Uh, I remember his boots and the sound he made. I remember him grabbing my, my hair, my head, and kind of dragging me up the stairs the rest of the, rest of the way. He dragged me into the, the room that those stairs opened into. It's uh, like a... So he dragged her up the stairs by her hair. Like, you know, up the stairs by her hair. Uh, which is vile, which is not even a humane thing to do. But he, he did that. He sent me um, toppling over this uh, chaise lounge, like a little low-lying sofa seat. And I um, hit my head on the, on the brick. Uh, wall. It was a, there was an exposed brick wall. Hit her head on a brick wall after being, like, thrown, flung, and toppled onto a brick wall. And he balled up his fist, leaned back, and headbutted me square in the nose. Just right as I stood in front of him. Um, we had another um, struggle. He overtook me. I am lost for words at the lengths this woman will go to to try and ruin this man's life. I just cannot believe it. I f hate you. I f hate you. I f hate you. Over and over. Pounding the back of my head. Pounding it with his fist. And I don't even remember feeling pain. I just could hear myself scream until I... To give you an example of the uh, tragic effects of the back of someone's head pounding, but if you search up a boxer named Pritchard Cologne, it's a very, very sad story, but uh, a boxer was actually hitting him in the back of the head and he actually developed brain damage and he lost every, he lost his career. But she would, she hit, she got hit with the concrete brick on her head and he just kept going and she's completely fine. And I thought, this is how I die. He's gonna kill me now and I'm not, he's gonna kill me and he won't even have realized it. Punching me over and over and I don't, have any memory after that until I woke up. Just hitting over and over and over, and she has no memory until he wakes up. Do you notice that none of these stories have an ending? When we look at a case, uh, a criminal case or something, when we look at a fight, uh, none of the fights end with, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, man. Someone's going down. Something bad is that there's going to be a conclusion, but there is no conclusion to any of these. It just stops. My head was bleeding from the ripped out hair, chunks of hair on the floor all over the place, actually. It was just all over the apartment. Michelle, I'm going to ask you to bring up Defendant's Exhibit 510. Chunks of hair, and then they bring up hair, and I will, I will, I'll give you a hundred bucks if you don't tell me that is dog oh. hair or tuft hair from something that is not human hair. I don't know what that is, but that is not her goddamn hair, is it? It's too thick and rough, isn't it? I thought there was a lot of hair everywhere. Why didn't you take more pictures of the hair? Why didn't you take pictures of the bed or the bleeding or anything else that happened? Why is it such a close-up of this picture? What's in it? What is it in relation to? Please, can I know something about this evidence? that will give me any inclination as to what is going on, because this is ridiculous. This is nothing. It proves nothing. This is um, my face um, with um, a busted lip, which it's difficult to see in this picture, but right, if you could just briefly describe to the jury what this one is. Uh, so, so this is her face, is it? This is after everything. She got dicked in the face. She got her hair pulled out. She got 
hit in the back of their head. This is after all of that. I think this is um, maybe the, that night or the next night after um, Johnny left me on the bed. One night after. One night after sustaining all those uh, injuries. And she looks like Macaulay Culkin in Home Alone. You have to appear, were you scheduled to appear on the James Corden show on December 16th? Meanwhile, she goes on the James Corden show a day after these injuries happen. She gets her team to brush her up and they make her look good. In fact, they make her look so good that I asked my friends who are girls to just inform me about how makeup works. And they said that they could not see anything different other than the foundation and it didn't look any more put on in any other places. I got it verified. I just wanted to be sure because I wanted to give this woman the benefit of the doubt. But by every person I've asked, there's, there's nothing wrong. She just, there doesn't seem to be any, any issues. So yeah, use for yourself, look at it. Uh, tell me, do you see any, anything? Like with the makeup, do you see anything at any point on her head or anywhere else that she said that she was injured? She said her nose, she said her mouth. Do you see anything? Because I don't. Did there come a time that you uh, changed your mind and went to the Bahamas with Mr. Depp for Christmas? Eventually. Eventually I did. And to cap things off and the thing that I think is the silliest of all is that after she goes on the James Corden show where she gets, you know, a day uh, after the DA happens yet again. And after her friends say they are not going to the island because of all the stuff that she showed them, she then decides, yes, I will go to the island. Now, besides that being stupid because she wants to go to the island all of a sudden, it's also stupid because literally... How can your family see this and how can your friends see this and be like, yeah, I'm not going, but you can go. How has nobody stepped into your life at this point and been like, I'm not going to let this happen. If that was my friend, there is no damn way in hell I'm letting them do that. You're kidding me. This story is so far-fetched. That's my estimation of when Johnny reached me, um, grabbed me by the hair, swung me around. They pulled up in the um, ATV. I remember the headlights. I remember separating from him. Uh, or them kind of running up and saying something and separating us. And, uh, and and I didn't see Johnny for the rest of the evening is my recollection. We're good. All right, we'll see you Monday, May 16th, 9 a.m., right? And that's how she ends the testimony. I don't know if she went back home. She wouldn't say. What happened to the family? Wouldn't say. What happened to the divorce? Wouldn't say. This is her testimony and that's how it ends. We, we break for court and a week later we are going to have cross-examination. She doesn't really end it in any specific way. That That's her testimony. I mean, we sat through the whole thing. This is 14 hours worth of deposition testimony. Uh, it is... It's... I, I don't know. How do you feel about it? I feel like she acted her way through it. I feel like every time she told a story, she felt she needed to one-up herself. And by the uh, the start, he just had thrown a slap. By the end of it, he had her literally by the hair, swinging her around. I guess that concludes my time here. Um, I'd like to thank Lola for participating in this. I would never actually do any of that to you. I think that I'm going to come back and do the cross-examination with you guys and then I'll make my final statements myself. But I just want to say that at the end of the day, it is probably one of the most dangerous things to have a woman lie about a man because in society, we give them the benefit of doubt. And, you know, we should. But at the same time, the amount of lies that she told, if she was better at lying, this would be a harder case. I, th I think there's no way in hell she's going to win this. I think her lawyers actually took the case knowing damn well they were going to lose, but they would get the exposure to up their practice and have more people talk about them. Because Lord knows, I would know nothing about Mr. Rottenburn if he was not actually in the picture. I wouldn't know about that man. But um, at the same time, they're going to get paid and they're going to get that exposure. So good for them. In the case of Amber, I, yeah, I just think she's lying. I think she's embellishing the truth. I think that maybe, yeah, Johnny actually did have some stints where he needed to get sober. And I think maybe even, you know, possibly verbally throwing some some insults her way. I, I can imagine that. I could see that happening. Beyond that, I don't, I don't think that he done any of that stuff. I just can't imagine him pulling these wrestling moves on her. But yeah, the way I'm going to end this is just to say that it's kind of sad to see two people in love go from that to this. I think in this world, uh, it's, it's really hard just to get by from day to day. 
and sometimes the best thing you can do is just wish them the best of luck and try and do better for yourself instead of trying to bring someone else down lying and cheating and stealing someone's livelihood it doesn't make you the better person at the end of the day so with that being said thank you so much for tuning in uh i'm sorry this was so long i hope that you have a good one i hope that you enjoyed the video if you did then let me know but yeah tell me what you think about the case and i will see you very soon i'm gonna do johnny depp's part and also the cross-examination when it comes and then we'll see if there's one more to closing statements but this has been lawyer leo this uh i bought the suit for this one <laughs> did you like it cool um yeah that's us signing out and i will see you very soon on the next one take care and see ya hey, I'm just